Welcome back to Today in History. I'm your host, Clayton Schneider. Today we're talking about the history of Veterans Day. On November 11th, 1918, at 11 a.m., World War I ended. So in 1938, America made November 11th a national holiday known as Armistice Day. After World War II and the Korean War, it became known as Veterans Day, and on June 1st, 1954, it officially became the holiday to honor all veterans. That's been Today in History, and I'll see you next time. What is Veterans Day? It is a day that encourages us to pay our respects to those who have given their lives in defense of our nation and to express our gratitude to the men and women serving in the military today. I'm Richard Green. I'm a teacher here at Washington Liberty High School, and I teach AP 11 English and English 11. I was commissioned in the United States Army as an officer, an infantry officer, in June of 1989, and I retired from the Army as a colonel in uh, 2011. I was an infantry officer, so part of my job was leading organizations and units at everything from the platoon level all the way up to the battalion level. A platoon has 34 soldiers in it, a battalion has almost a thousand soldiers in it, uh, to accomplish missions in ground combat. So pretty much what you'd imagine an army officer doing, I, I was uh, fortunate to do. Uh, I was normally in charge as an officer. Uh, sometimes I was on a staff and sometimes I was an actual commander. Well, there's a tradition of service in my family on both sides, my mothers and fathers. Um, interestingly, or at least it was interesting to me, uh, my ancestor, Nathaniel Green, uh, was General Washington's uh, right-hand man, if you will, during the Revolutionary War. And most men and some women in my family, starting from colonial times up to the present day, served in the military uh, in some fashion. And on my mother's side, her father and my grandfather uh, was an immigrant from Italy and he served in World War II uh, as a soldier in Alaska. Interestingly, it's taught me how to be self-reliant, that I could depend on myself in the most extreme circumstances. But the only reason I was able to depend on myself is because I was surrounded by good people who could look out for me and who could give me input and could recommend good ideas or talk me out of my own bad ideas. So it gave me a lot of self-confidence, but that self-confidence didn't come from inside me. It came from the good character and intelligence and abilities of everybody else around me. So I really learned to be much more humble. Without the Army, I don't think I would have been the person I am today, and I certainly wouldn't be able to work as a team in a team like here at Washington Liberty as uh, readily as I as I feel I am. Hi, my name is Jeff Carpenter. I'm the astronomy teacher here at Washington Liberty. I served for a little less than five years um, to pay back the government for paying for my education, and um, I was in the Air Force from about. January of 91 to May of 95. I went to Virginia Tech. I was in the Virginia Tech Corps of Cadets. So it was a very intensified ROTC program. Um, the Air Force paid for my education. I got a degree in aerospace engineering. And when I got out, I became a space operations officer. Um, so I learned satellite operations and um, space tracking. It was a great stepping stone to have a fantastic career in space operations. Um, I spent five years in the Air Force doing space operations, and afterwards I spent about another 15 years as a contractor doing space operations for various aspects of the intelligence community. So I worked in space operations for about 20 years prior to becoming a teacher. I just do this for fun. Hey generals, Mac here to provide you with some information on some historic athletes who represented our country in the military. Some famous baseball players who fought in the line of duty were Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams. DiMaggio and Williams served in World War II and were some of the most notable hitters of their time. DiMaggio most notably for setting the Major League hit streak record of 56 straight games. Williams is known for being arguably the greatest Red Sox in franchise history, and for consistently being the best hitter in baseball year after year for filling up the stat sheet. One professional football player that served in the military was Pat Tillman, who enlisted to fight in Afghanistan after 9-11 and passed away in the midst of service. Tillman was a safety for the Arizona Cardinals and left his career in the NFL to fight for his country, 
passing away as a result of accidental friendly fire. Tillman was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2010 and the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame in 2018, and is remembered for his excellent on-field play and heroics in the midst of war. Our last athlete we will discuss is NBA Hall of Famer David Robinson. Robinson served in the U.S. Navy from 1983 till 1987 and was nicknamed the Admiral by his teammates. Regarded as one of the greatest basketball centers of all time, Robinson was a 10-time All-Star, two-time NBA champion, and the 1995 MVP. We thank all the veterans out there for their contributions to our country, and happy Veterans Day to all out there. Go Generals!